Okay, so now when I take, uh, uh, you see, uh, well, since this energy contains uh, this factor here, and uh, if I take also, I divide by n here, when I take uh, uh, the derivative of this g with respect to h, I get uh, um, um, uh, I get essentially minus uh, um, m, okay? Because uh, this guy sits uh, on top of here, and uh, actually uh, it's plus m, okay? So uh, <coughs> this, gas, uh, this guy is on top of this. So when I take uh, the derivative uh, with respect to uh, h, I get uh, precisely this object uh, coming down in front of the sum. So it's, it's exactly the average of this object, OK? Just and uh, so. <coughs> Uh, now, the second derivative, uh, uh, if you compute uh, the second derivative uh, of this, uh, so if you compute uh, the derivative of m with respect to h, okay, it's going to be the second derivative of g with respect to uh, h, okay? And... Um, So um, what, you, uh, what you have is that the fact that uh, m increases with h means that uh, uh, g, the curvature of g, is, that g is a convex function, OK? And uh, as a function of h, OK? Now, uh, what you can argue is that, uh, say, uh, This function uh, f of m, uh, at least for uh, high temperature, is, uh, is uh, the um, Legendre transform of g of h. Okay. Um, is this clear to everybody? Yeah. It's function f of m. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, <clears throat> so the function f of m, which we descri described last time, was um, was essentially uh, minus one. Uh, it's uh, the entropy. energy minus uh, uh, the um, so let me remind uh, the meaning uh, physical meaning is the free energy instead of a free energy uh, so uh, you um, so in order to um, so if you want to compute uh, uh, what is the probability of I mean what is the probability of um, 
um, of having a particular magnetization equal to M. So what you have to do, uh, so let's do it. Uh, so what you have to do uh, is to, if you want to compute this object, So you have one over uh, the partition function, then uh, uh, this is the calculation that we did last time, right? Um, uh, sorry. Then e to the minus uh, energy over t, and then you have a delta function of m minus Okay, so this is the calculation that you have to do. Okay, now uh, the <coughs> the um, so this, since uh, this energy itself is a function of n of m. Okay, so uh, this uh, uh, becomes just uh, one over. Uh, Z of t, uh, e to the minus, uh, uh, e to the plus j uh, over uh, 2, and, uh, and then there is n, and there is t, m squared, so n, uh, let me take it. Uh, n over t, j half m squared plus h m. Okay, so this is, uh, this is this object here. And then uh, you have just the sum over the number of configurations that have magnetization equal to m, and this gives you the entropy, okay? So uh, it's what we call the n times this uh, small s of m. Okay, and this S of M is 1 minus M divided by 2 log 1 minus M divided by 2 minus 1 plus M over 2 log 1 plus M over 2. Okay, so um, now what is Z of T? So, so Z of T is just uh, the normalization. Okay, so Z of T is just uh, uh, the integral between minus 1 and 1 in the M of this object here. Uh, so let, so this, this is what I call, uh, uh, say, um, so this I can call it, uh, I can put a, a T here. And what is in this parenthesis is what I call F. Okay, so, um, oh, oh, so, so sorry, uh, it's what I call uh, uh, minus f, okay? I'm calling it minus f. Okay, so this object here is minus f, okay? So this is uh, n to the, so the, 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 the normalization, which is the partition function, is just, just this integral that you do with a partition, uh, with a saddle point integration, okay? So this thing will be dominated by uh, the M, which makes uh, F of M uh, maximal, okay? Um, so this is just E to the minus N over T, F of M star. And if you look what is the M star, it's precisely given by this equation here, okay? Now, already here, you see that uh, the M star that dominates uh, this, uh, this calculation here uh, has to be the maximum. Uh, sorry. Um, it has to be a minimum of F, because it has to be a maximum of minus F. Okay? So it can only be this point or this point. So this point will never come up 
from this calculation, okay? And, um, uh, and then, say, if you put uh, this back uh, here, you get uh, this formula here, okay? Okay. Now, uh, so, uh, so what we get is that uh, the physics, uh, which is described by this model, is one uh, where uh, if you are uh, at uh, high temperature, uh, uh, magnetization is a smooth function of, uh, of T. If you are lo low temperature, instead uh, the magnetization uh, has uh, essentially this uh, hysteretic behavior, okay? So this hysteresis. As you change H, uh, uh, the, uh, these two uh, minima uh, get tilted, and one gets, uh, so <coughs> if you are at H equal to zero, you are in a situation where these two things are symmetric. So this will be H equal to zero. And if you go to negative h, uh, this uh, minima will be at zero, and this other minima will be up, OK? So one, one of these two states uh, is, uh, is a metastable state. And the other one is the stable state, OK? Uh, okay, so um, so there are a number of uh, 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 considerations I wanted to make uh, on this uh, on this. Uh, uh, thing uh, on this uh, set of results. So the first one is uh, that uh, uh, <clears throat> actually in a so uh, mean field model are uh, very particular. I mean this is a behavior in particular. This is a behavior which is uh, typical of mean field model. So. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, when when you ha when you are uh, in um, so as we said uh, I mean this is uh, 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 a phenomenology for uh, t less than t c you have a phase transition between uh, as you as you change the field you have a phase transition between two uh, uh, different states. Uh, So the question is uh, how, <coughs> when you decrease the magnetic field and you go from, uh, say, positive H to negative H, so this uh, state here becomes metastable, okay? So how do you go from uh, a stable state to a metastable state, okay? Um, so physically, uh, what happens in real magnets is that uh, uh, <clears throat> is that uh, you can uh, nucleate by a small fluctuation a, a droplet of uh, say the negative uh, of spins aligned in a negative direction, and this droplet will uh, start growing. Okay. So this is uh, um, um, speed of the composition. This is the, the and what happens is that essentially, as soon uh, as uh, you are on the negative with uh, a small negative uh, magnetic field, 
you will just uh, uh, cross to negative magnetization. Okay? Because essentially what you need uh, uh, is just uh, a, a droplet of a finite size and um, And uh, if this droplet is larger than a critical size, then uh, it will expand and invade the whole system. Okay? And, uh, the, uh, and the fluctuation, uh, and the energy that you pay, I mean, uh, the, uh, the probability for this, uh, uh, for this fluctuation is related to the energy uh, difference. And, um, and so it's a finite Actually, it's a probability that depends only on the uh, surface energy of the solvent. So, uh, it's uh, something that will typically happen. Okay. So instead, uh, in these uh, mean field models, uh, uh, you don't, since you don't have, uh, you cannot create surface because uh, it's all, everything is connected to everything else. Uh, every spin is connected to everything. So there is no bulk and there is no surface, you cannot create sur uh, any surface as uh, um, so there is no way in which you can uh, uh, define a sub-region of a fully connected model, okay, which does not interact with all the rest. Then uh, uh, this uh, droplet picture does not apply and, and, uh, and, so, <coughs> and so what happens uh, when this uh, um, Physically, uh, when you have this mechanism of these uh, droplets, uh, is that essentially uh, you, uh, what you reach, uh, I mean, at uh, uh, this transition point, uh, this phase transition point, what you have is uh, um, um, is uh, uh, what corresponds to the Maxwell uh, construction. Uh, the, 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 what corresponds physically to the Maxwell construction, which is essentially to substitute these functions with a function uh, which, is, uh, which is a linear interpolation uh, between these two minima. Okay, so the function, uh, the green function is uh, replaced by a function which is linear between uh, these two objects. So, okay, so, so that uh, it always has just one minimum. Okay, and the interpretation of uh, a point uh, here is that uh, any point here will be um, a, a, a mixture of uh, this state, uh, of a system in this state, so uh, in finite dimensions, so you can create uh, a system uh, which has uh, uh, where a certain fraction can be in the plus state and the rest is in the minus state. And by changing the relative size of these two objects, you can go from any point here to any point here. Okay? So this is essentially the physics of uh, Maxwell uh, construction. So in the mean field models, uh, this, uh, of course, is not possible because essentially there is no uh, way to define um, a, a surface, okay? Um, <clears throat> However, there are situations where, uh, um, uh, where actually, um, um, metastable states, and actually the, most of the course of uh, Federico Ricci will deal with systems where, uh, um, like glasses, uh, where uh, essentially the system is trapped into metastable state uh, essentially forever. Okay, so, so the, the, the physics uh, um, is uh, essentially the, uh, the one of uh, um, Metastable states essentially because these are systems which have uh, uh, many met met metastable states. So, so uh, <coughs> in this, uh, for this system, um, essentially mean field model provide a, uh, can provide a good approximation. Okay. 
So the other thing I wanted to uh, remind you is uh, <coughs> why is it uh, that uh, uh, we have uh, why is it uh, that uh, we have uh, this phenomenon of uh, ergodicity breaking and. Um, <coughs> So let me consider the case where uh, uh, you are uh, at h equal to 0. OK, so um, Actually, no, let's consider a general case where, uh, let me redraw this. Let us consider a general case where uh, uh, you are uh, um, um, you have uh, uh, two minima. Uh, Okay, so you have two minima, and uh, <coughs> let's imagine that your system is uh, in this uh, state, in the metastable state, and you ask yourself, uh, how much time will it take for the system uh, to go into the stable state? Okay. Now, <coughs> in order to think about uh, how much time uh, it will take uh, you. You have to think about uh, what is the reasonable dynam. What is a reasonable dynamics? The reasonable dynamics is a local one. It's a local one where essentially um, is described in terms of events, and the simplest event is uh, an event where one spin flips from up to down or from up down to up. Okay. So you have uh, generally a. Your uh, dynamics will be a, a subsequence of events where uh, spins flip, okay? And uh, so you have a change from a configuration C to a configuration C prime, which is equal to C, but uh, um, say with the with a particular spin uh, which is flipped, OK? Now, the question is, uh, how much time? Uh, uh, so <clears throat> if you think at two uh, general configurations, C and um, uh, <clears throat> uh, and C uh, tilde, OK, then any, um, uh, so if you think, uh, uh, so you are in this configuration here at time zero, and you want to uh, uh, ask yourself how much time will it take you to go to a configuration that uh, has uh, the equilibrium magnetization, then essentially uh, the, the issue is uh, how uh, um, you have to think of all possible sequence of paths of configurations of spin flips uh, that can leave you, lead you to a configuration here to a configuration here, OK? And uh, in order to define this, uh, uh, so uh, um, <coughs> these dynamics, what you have to define is uh, the uh, rate at which uh, these uh, uh, transition will take place, OK? And uh, so the general uh, uh, idea of uh, how you define this transition is, uh, so what type of dynamics uh, uh, can be meaningful for, uh, for this system is, um, I mean, the basic uh, consideration is that you want uh, to look at dynamics that will lead to this, uh, uh, to the equilibrium, to Boltzmann uh, 
uh, uh, equilibrium, okay? And so, uh, in order to do this, uh, uh, you, <coughs> you want uh, uh, to enforce uh, detail balance, okay? What is detail balance? Detail balance tells you that uh, if you have a certain uh, uh, probability distribution, uh, the probability that uh, you go from a certain configuration C to a certain configuration C prime must be equal to the uh, uh, probability of the reverse transition. Okay, so um, the way you have to think uh, uh, this is, uh, is that uh, <coughs> if you have... Um, like this. If you have uh, your uh, set of states, uh, so <clears throat> so imagine that you have a set of states. Uh, which are the configuration of your systems, okay? So you want to, now you want to find the dynamics uh, that uh, uh, goes from one state to the other, uh, which is made of single uh, hop from one state to the other. And, uh, and you want to ensure that uh, these uh, dynamics, uh, which is defined by these rates, uh, is such that at in equilibrium, you will have a certain uh, probability distribution, which is this uh, um, equilibrium distribution. So the first thing uh, you have to make sure of uh, is that uh, the set of uh, transitions that you allow um, result in a dynamics which is ergodic. Okay? Which means, what, the, what does it mean, ergodic? You know what is ergodic? So the, for any two states, there is a sequence, uh, there is at least a sequence of transition with uh, non-negative uh, rates uh, that connects one to the other. You can go from any state to any other state with positive probability. Okay? If this is so, then, uh, um, then uh, your, uh, 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 I mean, this is a uh, necessary condition to be ergodic. Okay? And of course, this, uh, uh, this, um, this dynamics here is ergo I mean, uh, satisfy this condition because I can, uh, for any two configuration, we differ by, uh, uh, say, the, the orientation of the spins. I can think of uh, just uh, uh, flipping the spins which do not agree, okay, in the two configurations, okay? So, one by one, okay? So the second thing uh, that you want to ensure, so this uh, tells you what are uh, the transitions. Yes? Uh, is that what you said, uh, just in one, uh, one state, you have uh, the state to that state? Uh, is it just one flip, or is it a group of flips that? You can also define uh, a dynamics uh, by flipping a group of spins and is actually uh, something which is very useful. Uh, but typically, physically, what you think uh, is that essentially the, uh, the real dynamics uh, is by just uh, flipping, uh, because essentially every spin is subject uh, to thermal fluctuations, and, uh, and so every spin has, uh, will uh, flip more or less independently from the others, so they, they do not flip in a correlated manner, okay? And uh, of course, I mean, they, they can flip uh, uh, over longer time scales, you can have this correlated move because essentially once uh, a spin flip, uh, then uh, because of the interaction, the other neighboring spin can flip and so on. And, um, and this is actually, uh, uh, this is actually, um, 
the basis of uh, um, what are called the cluster algorithm uh, methods for uh, simulating uh, these systems, and uh, which is a uh, very so. So the the point is uh, <coughs> the point is uh, that uh, these dynamics are used also to do numerical simulations. Okay, to do numerical simulation to re, I mean to sample equilibrium distributions. Okay. So, um, and typically what, what happens is that uh, in order to uh, reach the equilibrium state, uh, you, you start from a certain initial condition that may be completely random, and then uh, you let the dynamics evolve. You wait a little, t a little bit, and then you will be in the equilibrium state. Now, the, uh, the time to reach equilibrium it happens that it diverges at critical points, OK? So this is called uh, critical slowing down, which is actually uh, uh, related to uh, physical, uh, uh, I mean, a real physical phenomena that occur in, uh, uh, at phase transition. So if you take a liquid uh, close to a critical point, uh, it will show this uh, critical opalescence in the sense that uh, it is no more transparent. Uh, this is related to the scattering of uh, uh, different wavelengths, OK? And, um, and so um, if you think about the dynamics like uh, this one to reach the equilibrium, then uh, close, if you want to sample the equilibrium distribution, dynamic, dynamics based on single uh, spin flip will be extremely slow. Very, very slow. It takes time uh, uh, to reach the equilibrium, which scale with a, uh, uh, with a non-trivial power of the system size. So if you want to uh, make uh, uh, your algorithm faster, what you do is, uh, uh, is to integrate time uh, to find uh, say, more clever uh, uh, definition of this uh, transition that involves uh, flipping uh, whole clusters of spins, OK? And, uh, and this is what this Wentz and Wang algorithm, uh, et cetera, do. And uh, it's a very interesting idea, but, that's, but this is. Um, OK, let me go back uh, here. So essentially, once you. Uh, uh, <coughs> uh, ensure that uh, every state can be reached by any other state. Uh, then in equilibrium, what you want to have is that uh, the flow of probability from any state to any other state, which are connected by a transition, should be equal to the flow of probability in the other direction. You can think of this uh, as a fluid, probability as, a, as being a fluid. And you don't want uh, that in equilibrium there is any uh, flow in the system, OK? There is, uh, you, you don't want any probability flow. So first of all, for any transition one direction, you should have the transition in the opposite direction, OK? Because otherwise, detail balance is not conserved, OK? So any transition should be reversible or sh should allow for the opposite transition. And then uh, if you want to allow, the, uh, if you want to impose that uh, the flow probability in one direction equals to the flow probability in the other direction, then uh, this is the equation that you have to uh, satisfy. And this essentially tells you that uh, the, uh, the rates, uh, the ratio of the rates in the two directions Uh, should be equal to the rate of the probability, or the probabilities. Which is essentially equal to A to the uh, energy differences. Okay? Uh, e of C prime minus E of C. OK? So there are uh, different uh, ways in which you can realize this. 
So this, this is the condition of the Terban. So there are different ways in which you can realize this. One is uh, Metropolis, uh, where you take uh, these uh, way, ra rates as being the uh, minimum between uh, 1 and uh, e to the minus uh, delta e over t, where delta e is this difference, OK? So this, uh, so this tells you that uh, if, you, if you are going from a state uh, to a state with lower energy, if you are proposing a st to go to a state with lower energy, you always accept the move. Otherwise, uh, you don't accept the move. Uh, 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 you accept the move only with probability e to the minus delta e over t if your energy increases. Okay. Uh, <coughs> another choice is Glauber, where uh, uh, this uh, rate is equal to e to the minus energy of the new configuration divided by t divided by some of the two energies. Et cetera, et cetera. You can think uh, at uh, uh, different um, dynamics, okay? But you say once you have uh, defined your dynamics, uh, um, the issue is uh, how long uh, uh, should you wait before you go from uh, this state uh, to this state, okay? So one simple argument for this uh, is the following. Uh, so that if, if your dynamics, uh, so uh, let's imagine... Uh, that I plot uh, the magnetization, uh, say the, yes, the magnetization is a function of, uh, of time, okay? And uh, so essentially, uh, <coughs> what will happen uh, in this, uh, in a finite system, what will happen is that under this uh, dynamics, the system is ergodic, so it will visit every configuration. So um, it will be in the negative uh, uh, configuration for some time. Then it will jump to the positive. Then it will jump uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the negative again. It will stay for a little while there and start, uh, jump again, et cetera, et cetera, OK? Now what we want to ask is uh, how long is this time, OK? So if you really look uh, at uh, uh, very long times, then uh, uh, this will be uh, your dynamics, OK? Now, <clears throat> essentially, the one simple uh, argument is that, uh, say, um, if you uh, Lower temperature, low, low, uh, low TC. But this is, uh, here I have, uh, uh, say, non-zero uh, magnetic field, OK, in this particular case, OK. So um, <clears throat> now, essentially, the um, One simple argument is that essentially the, uh, the time I have to wait uh, uh, for a transition is essentially the time uh, uh, that it will take me uh, to uh, reach uh, uh, a state which is up here. Because once I'm up here, I have half probability to go one side uh, on the other side, OK? So if I am on this, uh, uh, in this state uh, and I have to go to this state, essentially um, the time uh, it will take to me to go here is essentially proportional to the time uh, uh, it will take for me to, for, to go from here to, uh, to this point. Because then with probability, finite probability, I will go uh, on, uh, on, uh, on the equilibrium state, OK? And uh, this, uh, uh, 
this probability here is, is equal to the relative uh, uh, fraction of uh, time points uh, where uh, uh, I am at those states, uh, if I consider a very long time, compared to the time that I am in the uh, low energy, in the, in the uh, negative end state. Okay? And this, uh, <coughs> and since this, uh, the, the fraction of uh, the time I spend uh, at, at these points is proportional uh, um, to the probability, okay? And uh, a fraction I spend at uh, this point is equal to the probability, then uh, this time here will be uh, proportional to the ratio between uh, uh, the probability of uh, being uh, uh, in, the, in C0 and the probability of being in, uh, say, configurations which are up here, okay? Or well, let's say which have uh, essentially, um, uh, which are on this uh, unstable state, okay? So uh, it is essentially, since uh, this probability are given by Boltzmann distribution, it is essentially equal to e to the minus, uh, e to the, um, uh, the energy difference divided by t, where the energy difference is uh, this one, okay? So and now you see why uh, when I take the limit uh, uh, as n goes to infinity before taking h go to zero, I get uh, uh, I I uh, I get stuck into metastable state or say say uh, the the because essentially these times are proportional to uh, to the volume. Uh, proportional to exponential of the volume. So this time diverge very, very fast uh, as n goes to infinity. So essentially the probability that I will go uh, from uh, the metastable state to the st uh, stable state uh, in a mean field model when n goes to infinity is, uh, um, uh, is going to diverge because uh, there are uh, these uh, energy barriers between states which are uh, uh, proportional to the volume, okay? There was a question somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, so, so the time uh, uh, it takes uh, to make, I mean, this time uh, makes to make a transition is essentially um, the time is proportional, is to, uh, scales uh, with a finite power of n, okay? okay? Whereas this time is exponential in n. Okay, so in this picture, it is really sharp when n is large. Okay, so the, the time it takes uh, uh, is really, um, the time it takes uh, is really the time it takes to flip uh, n spins, okay? Typically, it's a sort of a diffusion, you can think of it as a uh, driven diffusion process, okay? So it takes uh, or the n to some power alpha, okay? Depending on it. But this is uh, very, very short compared to the, residence time in any of the two states, okay? Now, so, um, okay, so this fact that uh, you have, uh, uh, this fact that uh, you have uh, this ergodicity breaking when n goes to infinity is related to the fact that you have uh, energy barriers which uh, uh, go to infinity when the system size goes to infinity, okay? So let's take a five minutes break and then uh, uh, we continue. Yes. So, 
uh, in particular this probability is 1 minus m star alpha times sigma i divided by two. Okay. So this, uh, uh, this probability is, uh, is 1 plus m for sigma equal to plus uh, 1 minus m uh, divided by 2 for sigma equal to minus. So uh, what uh, <coughs> this means is that essentially for mean field model, if you look at the pure state of a mean field model, uh, the probability distribution is uh, factorizes over the spins. Okay. So and this is uh, essentially um, now. Um, Um, okay, okay, so so um, there are more uh, um, uh, rigorous ways to see that uh, this must be true for uh, uh, mean field models, but essentially this is, uh, uh, I think, a uh, uh, strong argument. So the fact that the correlations uh, are essentially zero means that, uh, suggests that uh, the probability distribution is factorized. So, um, in general, this is uh, the um, even uh, this uh, um, this assumption can be used also for uh, finite dimensional models uh, uh, as an approximation. Okay, and um, it's uh, it is the um, Mean field approximation. It, it may shed, I mean, it may be useful. Okay. So now the last thing I wanted to uh, 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 tell you uh, is uh, uh, how um, <clears throat> how do you compute this function? Okay. So essentially, the idea uh, in the in the mean field is in model computing uh, the probability of the magnetization is easy because essentially the energy is a direct is directly a function of the magnetization so uh, so it's uh, <clears throat> it's a very easy task but in general Say if you want uh, what I think uh, you will go in, uh, you are going to discuss with uh, with Federico when he comes is uh, uh, how uh, can you deal uh, with uh, mean field model that uh, these uh, uh, models with uh, infinite range interaction, but where uh, the interactions uh, can be anything. Okay. Or in particular, where the interactions are drawn at random from some distribution. Okay? So these are essentially spin glass models. Essentially, also for these models, uh, you would imagine that uh, uh, your probability distribution of the co configurations can be divided into uh, pure states. And that for any pure state, you have uh, a... Um, uh, so that essentially you can still write this thing, uh, and that uh, uh, on any pure state uh, you have the clustering property. So that any of these uh, can be written as, as a product of uh, uh, probabilities on the individual spins. Okay. Uh, now the question is, uh, 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 how do you um, how do you compute these things? Huh? So uh, how do you uh, so uh, what in uh, what uh, <clears throat> how can you uh, access these quantities? Okay, so in uh, um, finite dimensional systems. Uh, a pure state uh, is uh, selected by choosing the boundary conditions. So 
So if you choose, uh, say, for example, uh, in a, in a ferromagnet, uh, if you impose uh, that the spins on the boundary are positive, then uh, uh, all the spin, I mean, the magnetization will be positive if you are at low temperature. If you impose that the uh, spins on the boundaries are, uh, are uh, negative, then uh, the uh, magnetization will be negative. But if you are in a mean field model, you don't have a boundary. Okay, there is no surface. Okay. So uh, what do you do? So uh, what you can do is to uh, do what we have been doing uh, uh, last time. It is to say uh, you introduce a small field, then take the limit as n goes to infinity, and then take the, limit, the, the, small, uh, the, the, the field to zero. Okay? So you select a mean field model. You can select different pure states with external fields, okay? Then uh, letting these uh, fields go to zero, okay? Okay. <clears throat> now, the last uh, uh, question that uh, uh, I want to address is uh, the following. So the, 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 general, uh, the general idea of uh, how to compute uh, free energies normally is that, uh, say, uh, you have the partition function. Let me now use uh, beta as 1 over t, which is uh, uh, the sum of all configurations v to the minus beta the energy. And um, and essentially what you want to uh, what you can do is uh, <coughs> uh, what you can do is to write a generating function, which depends on beta and on uh, external fields. Uh, let me call them uh, B, which is uh, just uh, uh, the sum of all configurations of e to the minus beta energy of the configuration. Uh, plus beta times uh, uh, sum of an i bi times sigma i. Okay. So if I do, um, so you see, once I if I can compute this object. Uh, then I can take uh, uh, the log of, uh, of uh, this thing. Um, and if I divide by beta, so uh, <clears throat> this, uh, this guy that I can call, uh, uh, say, let me call it uh, uh, G of, uh, or let's say, gamma of beta. Uh, okay, uh, well, let me call it with a different name, G of beta, uh, G of B. So this thing uh, uh, is, um, by taking derivative of uh, this function as a function of uh, Bi, I can compute the magnetizations. And since it is a pure state, uh, the magnetization will give me the full probability distribution, okay? Because this uh, probability, as we said, uh, this probability are just 1 plus mi alpha sigma i divided by 2. So if I can compute the magnetization on a pure state, then I can compute the full probability distribution, I can compute everything, okay? So, and uh, if I can compute this function here, then uh, the magnetization mi will be just uh, equal to the derivative of g with respect to uh, bi, okay? Okay? That's great. Um, 
Now the problem is that uh, <coughs> um, here essentially um, I'm summing over all the configurations and I'm not summing uh, so the 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 probability with which I'm weighting the configuration is given by the, the P is not given by the pure state. Okay? So, um, I did uh, say, for example, uh, if I want to compute uh, the, um, if I want to compute, uh, <coughs> so one thing that I could compute uh, from here is uh, um, the, um, let's say the free energy, the, analo the, the analogous of, uh, of uh, this thing, uh, uh, as a function of uh, the magnetizations. And, um, and the way I can do this uh, is by uh, choosing, uh, <coughs> is essentially by the Legend transform, okay? But essentially, um, uh, you know, when you have a function which uh, depends on its variable, or on some variables, I can go from this picture to another picture uh, where uh, uh, the variables, the, the independent variables, are the derivatives of the original variables by uh, a Legend transform. What I have to do is to um, uh, take, essentially take uh, um, the, um, the function uh, g of uh, uh, b uh, minus uh, uh, sum over i m i times b i, and then uh, just take uh, uh, an extremum <laughs> over B, which um, um, which in this case I think uh, should be a minimum, okay? A minimum. Okay, so you see that uh, this, uh, well, the uh, for, uh, I have to put a beta here. Okay, so this is uh, the, the usual uh, uh, recipe of a Legend transform. If you have a function that depends on certain variables, you want to pass to a description which depends on the conjugate variables, which are the derivative of uh, the uh, state function with respect to these variables, then uh, what you do is the Legend transform, okay? Now, the problem with this uh, is that uh, uh, a Legend transform uh, transforms uh, a convex function into another convex function. Okay? So, if you take, uh, uh, for example, if you, if you were to take uh, the mean field uh, um, easy model, as we define it, uh, and apply this strategy, uh, what you would get is not this function here, but uh, a function which is like this, then uh, like this, and like this, uh, because it is the convex hull of uh, the of the function. Oh, I mean, so the the uh, the, the if you think, uh, take uh, the um, uh, the function f, you do a, a Legend transform, you do this uh, uh, essentially <coughs> the, um, the z of beta, uh, if you want, is, will be given by the integral from minus 1 to 1 dm of e to the minus uh, 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 n beta f of m minus, if I take uh, b to be just uh, uh, the, the every, everything is proportional to b, 
Then, uh, uh, okay. So this is uh, uh, <coughs> what I should have. Uh, I mean, um, this should be the, the equivalent uh, function, uh, generating function I should compute for the mean field is in model. Okay. Now you see, if I do this uh, 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 this integral here, this uh, will be dominated by the um, by uh, uh, I can get. Uh, <coughs> This is uh, e to the minus n uh, times, uh, uh, so the, uh, let's put it like this, n uh, times uh, um, beta f uh, of m star of b minus b times m star, okay? Is the usual uh, what we have uh, just done. Uh, <coughs> so this uh, um, and this would be my function uh, uh, g of b in this case. But if I take this uh, and I do uh, uh, another Legend transform, I will not get back uh, the function f. I will get back uh, uh, a function uh, f tilde, which is. Uh, uh, the convex hull of the function f. Okay. So this problem, uh, so this tells you that essentially uh, you are not uh, this calculation, uh, which is using uh, generating functions uh, and uh, the Jean transform, is not giving you the metastable state. And uh, since the metastable states uh, are very important to describe the physics of uh, disordered systems and glassy systems, then uh, uh, one has to do something uh, better than this. Okay. So the main idea uh, is the following: so that uh, <coughs> so um, so if you look at um, at uh, the function f uh, of m for uh, the for the mean field is in model. What you find is that uh, um, so this function beta f that you are interested in is essentially uh, equal to um, I'll say uh, minus beta f is essentially equal to the entropy. Uh, minus uh, the energy, minus beta times the energy, which is uh, uh, beta times, yes, the energy is a function of it. Okay? Or say if you want. Uh, okay? Now what you see is that uh, say, uh, this function is a very simple function of uh, beta. If you keep m fixed, it's a very simple function of beta. It's a linear function of beta. So you can think uh, um, uh, we, which is sort of surprising, no? because essentially you have a phase transition, a singularity out of a function which is completely trivial in beta. Okay, uh, so so you see what we discussed is uh, say that uh, you have this phase transition, uh, the magnetization uh, as a function of temperature, which is one over beta. And there is this critical temperature, and then the, uh, is this singularity at this point. Now this is uh, not uh, a consequence of the free energy to being singular at this point here. It is the, the consequence of the fact that this uh, M star is the solution of uh, a, a minimization problem. Okay? So this M star is the solution of, uh, um, uh, is the, uh, essentially what minimizes uh, 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 a 
F star. F of M uh, of M actually uh, minus H times M. Okay. So the so even if this function here is completely uh, uh, trivial uh, as a function of beta, uh, this object uh, uh, can have a very uh, non-singular behavior as a function of beta. Okay. So the idea is, uh, um, uh, what if uh, we compute uh, 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 the free energy instead uh, of uh, the Legendre transform, we're using a Legendre transform as uh, a, as uh, a, um, a power expansion in beta. Okay, and so the uh, <coughs> the idea is uh, precisely this. So. Essentially, you want to define minus uh, beta f of m as uh, the log of uh, uh, the sum of all the configuration of e to the minus beta times the energy um, and then uh, you want uh, uh, to put here a delta function that tells you that uh, uh, 1 over n uh, somewhere i sigma i, uh, that the magnetization must be equal to n. Okay? Now, uh, <coughs> let me call this, uh, say, another function, let's say, gamma of m and uh, beta. And now, now I want to expand this function as a function of beta. Okay? So now the first term will be gamma of m and 0. Okay? Gamma of m and 0 is just, uh, I have to put a beta equal to 0 here. So I have just uh, the entropy, the log of the number of configuration with magnetization m. Okay? This is precisely equal to our entropy, S of M, okay? And uh, the second term, then, uh, you have uh, beta times uh, the derivative uh, with respect to beta of uh, gamma of M and beta in beta equal to zero. And now, when you take uh, uh, a derivative with respect to beta here, what do you get? You get uh, uh, minus the average energy. Okay. So uh, okay. So so th th there should be an n here also. So you get minus the average energy, and the energy is uh, precisely uh, equal to uh, this object here. You get precisely this object. Okay. And what about higher order terms? Well, uh, higher order terms will give you the fluctuations of the energy when m is fixed. But the energy is a function of m, so it does not fluctuate if m is fixed. Okay. So everything else is zero. Okay. So you see that if I uh, uh, if instead of uh, doing uh, um, the usual trick of uh, Legendre transform, I take this function here and I try to compute a high temperature expansion, then uh, I can uh, recover the full uh, uh, function uh, without recovering the, uh, let's say, without uh, getting uh, stuck with the convex uh, hull. So this is. Uh, what you are going to see next uh, week uh, uh, in much more detail uh, is called the George, uh, George Edida expansion. And it can be done in general for all mean field models. Okay? 
So with this, I think we can go and have lunch.